bro. I ain't getting goosebumps and stuff. Whoa. That's a crazy story. Crazy, actually. More and more tourists keep going to the Philippines. Wait a minute. I haven't gone yet, but I'm going. I'm going to be one of them. You heard that right. I'm going to be one of them. So many talents. Singing, bowling, basketball. You name it, man. Go ahead. The beautiful thing is the people are incredibly kind and humble. I feel like that is the most important part. You know what I'm saying? There's always a negative, but it's almost difficult to find a negative. And I ain't trying to blow smoke up nobody's cheeks, okay? I'm just keeping it real. I'm just looking at the positivity. You see what I'm saying? I hope that you see it. I don't give a damn if you really don't see it but you know what uh, don't ask i'm excited though because look so many are going there so many are traveling enjoying it and they're not there just for you know stupid reasons as oh the money is different people are going there because they genuinely enjoy it i'm gonna be one of those okay and the thing is there's a video made by casual chuck hey bro listen i love you bro he uh he pays full attention to my videos i was baffled you know i was watching one of his live streams a couple days ago enjoying it you know and i was drinking a cup of coffee like i am right now and then i was just watching his videos like man let me just type in here bro because i love this guy's videos he's super dope you know he's super nice he seems humble he makes fantastic videos and he seems like an upstanding guy so commented a little bit come to find out he regularly watches my videos and he actually pays attention wow you know, because sometimes you get caught up, and I'm sure, Casual Chuck, you know exactly what I mean. It's like, you you make so many videos, and you enjoy yourself, you love it, and sometimes it's hard to know if people really are listening. And this happens with music, too. If you've ever made music, you know, been an artist, it's hard to know if people are really paying attention. It's hard to tell. So you just continue going. But the feeling I got when I found out you paid attention, and you know that I love Ronaldo, and you know that I'm Brazilian, and you know my name is Gabriel, much love, bro. For real, much love to you. Fantastic guy. Check out his channel, guys. Casual Chuck. This is what I'm reacting to today. So yeah, let's get to this. Let's go. More and more foreigners are moving to the Philippines, not because of the affordable cost of living, the beautiful culture, or the scenery. Men that are so fed up with Western women because we're all apparently so woke and so terrible and Western women don't want to be wives, that they are now going to other countries to find wives. Like which countries? Like uh, Southeast Asia, they're going to the, you know, the Philippines, the Dominican Republic. So it's like the opposite of the mail order bride. And so a lot of these men get remote jobs. And so they go there and they live in these countries and then they meet these women. And then women in the Western world, specifically the United States, are so pissed off about it. And they're like, you're going to all these countries where these women don't even know how to speak English. They can't even read. They're so uneducated. And then the men like film themselves with these women and like show themselves on dates. And the women are so elegant and they're so well-spoken and they're so traditional. And they're like, look at these women. Like they're so respectful and kind. And the Western women are, you know, sitting on their, you know, fresh and fit podcasts or whatever podcasts losing their mind over this. When you pay attention to the passport bros, like they're getting women from like the DR, Colombia, yes. uh, the Philippines, Thailand, like women can that can speak very little English, women that don't have and, education, and not, women that, that need them, women that need women them. Women are raised to be wives. Mm -hmm. They learn everything the from, communities. from birth, from their father, from their mother, Yo. how to be a wife and how to support They are cloud chasing, bro. It's not I just gotta keep it real. This is just the type of stuff that you see that is called, uh, uh, what is it again? Shock marketing. That's just shock marketing. It's a fantastic way. Say out of pocket things. Look what's going to happen. You're going to be on a bunch of videos. Trust that for sure. I call it shock marketing. When women that need them, it's women that treat them with respect. So we don't. Y'all know y'all don't. Stop. <laughs> no, like, stop just stop. I live in your country and I speak two languages Tagalog and English. You live here. How many do you speak? One? You're stupid. <laughs> Well, let's be nice. Let's be it's nice. Funny. We don't have to go there. I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. I mean, good Lord. Do you think it is a prerequisite to speak the English language be in being Miss Universe? No, of course not. You know, a Miss Universe is just someone who communicates her thoughts effectively and is able to connect to people. And just like in music, you don't need to understand the lyric, but you can feel a feeling from what I they're say this all the time. So why should it be any different with language? Feeling like what? And I get it today. Hey, like, hey guys. Nope. So, toto bang my actor na nanligo sa yo? Yeah, but I said no. Rocky. <laughs> hey, you athlete. Didn't work out there. Rocky. <laughs> Ooh, what about the model? Nope. Long story. Rocky. This is Kelsey Merritt. 
She was born and raised in Angeles City, Pampanga to a Filipina mother and an American soldier. A pretty good example of a passport bro. Nice. As a teenager, Kelsey always wanted to be a model. She was so packed clothing brands. That's and dope. Sometimes even worked with other famous celebrities like Liza Zuberano and Bea Alonso, to name a few. And of course, even more commercials. Oh, hey, hey girls. girls! Working outside is so hot and sticky. And that means frizzy hair. Filipina models. Let's try a smile on Did she make it? You got the shot. That's crazy, bro. Happy for her, man. For real. That's so dope. I love that. She said what she was going to do. All you have to do is believe in yourself. It turned out that she wasn't just a dreamer, but a woman of action. Mm -hmm. Her tweet back then, she totally backed it up. And boy, was it satisfying for her to announce it. Wow. It was a proud moment for her Pinoy fans, for sure. Except... It wasn't for some of them. Some fans criticized her looks because they thought it didn't represent the real beauty of a Filipina. These comments were obviously heartbreaking for Kelsey and she couldn't help but respond to them. In her words, I was born and raised in Pampanga, Philippines. I finished my studies in Manila before going to the US last year. As far as I'm concerned, my blood is more Pinoy than the pure-blooded ones out there who have never been in the Philippines. I love my country and I'm proud of where I came from. Man, I gotta say that she handled her response so intelligently. So going back to the show, it underwent a lot of preparation. And when it was finally showtime, Kelsey Merritt did not disappoint. Hey, that's dope. You can see she's enjoying herself. I feel like that's the most important part too, you know. Do you realize how crazy this is? Kelsey literally walked among world famous models such as Kendall, Gigi, Adriana, Candice, Bahari, and more. She herself couldn't even believe it happened. That's awesome, dude. She just made history by becoming the first ever Filipina to have walked the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And she wasn't even done yet because after just a year, she also became the first model from the Philippines to be photographed for Sports Illustrated's annual swimsuit issue. A feat that's further cemented her rising status as the jewel achievements from Victoria's Secret and Sports Illustrated is rarely accomplished by any model. Despite all the accolades, Kelsey continued to stay true to her roots. She stayed humble. And it's quite easy to observe the way she interacts with other people because she still speaks Tagalog and sometimes even her local language, Kapampangan. Mm. Oh, Adriana Mangantana. Sisi. Sisi. So no matter what happens, I will always be proud of Kelsey Merritt despite of her being a target of some Pinoy bashers. Now if you think Kelsey's bashers were rude, they're nothing compared to Bill of Porches. <laughs> oh, because crabs. not only some of her own people hated her, but also Jesus himself. It was so bad that even content creators made negative videos about her. I don't even question who gets famous on TikTok. It's just her making faces. Oh, look, she did uh, I think. God damn it! I'm sick of seeing her face. I don't understand why this is big. <laughs> Bella Backyard over here contorting her features to be all cutesy-like gives me the rage to take down the Chinese government from the inside. And she just gets so God. much hate because her videos are like low effort or whatever. People's like, oh, you're so talentless. You don't deserve all this fame. But is that all there is to it? Is Bella just some random Filipino girl without any talent who got lucky enough to have TikTok's algorithm on her side? To answer those questions, I did some research mm -hmm. and found out that there's more than meets the eye. Oh, really? Bella's real name is Denari Bautista Taylor. She was born and raised in Pangasinan, Philippines. 
She didn't know her Filipino parents because after her birth, her grandmother took care of her until the age of three and was then adopted by an American veteran and a Filipina stepmom. At age seven, when she became capable of doing chores, her abusive stepdad would make her clean their farm as When Bella turned 13, Karma would do its work as her stepdad had to fly the family to the U.S. for the need of bypass surgery. Due to his condition, Bella no longer experienced physical abuse but the emotional maltreatment still persisted. At age 17, Bella had enough so she decided to join the U.S. Navy to get away. After Damn, boot camp, she was given the role of an aviation ordnance man. She was basically responsible for the maintenance of guns, bombs, torpedoes, rockets, and missiles. Man, the job sounds very dangerous but you can't deny that it sounds badass too. After four yeah. years in service, she decided to call it quits and now we're all caught up. Bella Poch became famous for lip syncing to the song M to the B which produced the most liked TikTok ever. People liked it at first, but as she continued million. uploading similar videos, some critics started noticing her little to non-existing effort in sad videos. They couldn't wrap their heads around how she was getting all the success in just a short period of time. In her first 12 months, she casually racked up 60 million followers. That's basically 5 million followers per month, or 165,000 followers per day. It's so insane that her number of followers today is even more than the population of Canada and Australia combined. Despite all the criticism, she stayed silent. But not until May 14, 2021, when mm. she decided to silence them. Welcome to Match Made Home with a Perfect Woman. Come on in and design the girl in your dream. Oh, I seen this. She killed it, bro. This is actually a good song. I've seen this song before. For sure Ludwig was in this too. Bella's debut as an artist became the biggest music debut ever in YouTube history. She then started sharing her story through podcasts and made sure that she also showcased her talent. They say build a bitch. You don't get to pick and choose. Differ out some bigger boobs. If my eyes are brown or blue. See the line where the sky meets the sea. It's it good calls lyrics. me. No one knows how far it goes. Seems like everybody's got a price. Oh, I love that song. Sleep Keep at night. night. When the sun comes first and the truth, truth comes, comes second, second, just stop for stop a minute. For a minute and, and smile. I love that song. Says it was easy. She's a really good singer. No, it will be this hard. no mic. Oh, take me back. To the start. At this point, I'm not even surprised anymore <laughs> because you know how it is with Filipinos. Oh, we I love, love this karaoke video. karaoke and Bella eats yes. it for breakfast. She's killing it, bro. This day, Bella Porch is still active in TikTok on her music career. She released more bangers such as Inferno, Living Hell, Dolls, and recently Crush. What I like about Bella is she's a loud and proud Filipina. She speaks three different Filipino languages and she doesn't even hide it in her live streams and interviews. Ba. Ba. To be proud of. Awesome, bro. While Kelsey and Bella experienced haters, this Filipina experienced far greater dangers. Pulling to the inside, Bustamante oh. into turn one, but she's collected by mm. Amanda Alcabezi, who gets her breaking rock. And unfortunately, Bustamante is going, there doing to my stop thing, her. Doing, doing thing. This time, uh, it's uh, Bianca uh, Bustamante's turn. Seriously though, what is up with this Bustamante blood? Yeah, line? bro! Why do they always end up on these lists? Anyway, Bianca was born and raised in Laguna, Philippines. 
Ever since she was a toddler, she was pretty much exposed to the sport of oh, racing so because cute. her dad was a kart racer. At the age of six, she was already competing. She competed against boys most of the time and still won, so she gradually accumulated more than 100 trophies by the time she turned 17. Wow. Due to the amount of training and experience at such a very young age, she qualified to compete in the W Series. How many can say that, man? All female racing championship that is known as a stepping stone to make it in Formula One. Sadly, though, Bianca didn't win, but she performed well enough to earn the spot in the Formula One Academy. Despite being only 18, it didn't take her very long to bag her first F1 Academy win, which happened in the very challenging racetrack in Valencia, Spain. It's a good start by Bianca Bustamante. Bianca Bustamante. Yo, this stuff gives me goosebumps, man. It's like scary. You think it's slow, but it ain't. Bustamante runs off wide into the gravel, manages to get back onto the track, though. But that allows Bula and Handa Alcavesi to close right in on her. Can Bianca Bustamante hold on? It will be Bustamante who crosses Ooh. the line first to win her first F1 Academy race. The Filipino racer, wow, Bianca man. Bustamante, celebrates. What a start to her F1 Academy Championship. This victory made her the very first Filipino to win an international race in the league that is directly associated with Formula One. That's As she awesome. stood at the top of that podium, Bianca couldn't help but lose it when our national anthem started playing. Yeah, bro, I wouldn't hold it in either, bro. I'd just start. <sighs> bro, I'm getting goosebumps and stuff. It was an amazing feeling, my first ever race win. And the national anthem was uh, from Philippines was played in the podium and that just got me crying. Uh, it hasn't been played for a very long time, so I'm very thankful for it. Sheesh, these moments always get me. Yeah, bro. Two months later, she would bag another win in Monza, Italy while experiencing some very dangerous crashes. As they make their way to the first breaking zone of the year and there's Whoa. a huge shunt to the back. It's Chloe Garant in the ART car, upside down. It's actually Amna Alcabasi, she hits in the MP motorsport car, then Bustamante. And I think Schreiner, another innocent victim there from her teammate in front as well, flames out the back. Scary. Bianca Bustamante out in front. Disaster once again for Amda. So she just breaks a little bit too late. And unfortunately, Bustamante is there to stop her. It's Bustamante who's just going to get in front of Carrie Schreiner. Ooh. Bianca Bustamante almost forced into the grass by pulling. It's respectful racing. Bustamante crosses the line to take her second win. In F1 Academy, the Bremer team celebrate with smiles all round and a job well done for Bianca Bustamante. When I went on top of the podium, I heard them chanting my name and really that just got me crying again. To hear the anthem played and the Italian fans cheering me on, I just felt right at home. I've always been so proud of being Filipino and even though sa mundo ng motorsport hindi ito ganong kasikat or wala masyadong madaming Pilipinong karerista mm -mm. I'm still so proud of it Jeez, this girl is really out there risking her life for Killing a passion it. while representing her country as of the making of this video, the current F1 Academy season is still ongoing and Bianca Bustamante is currently sitting at rank number 7 out of 15 drivers. Not bad at all for a rookie. And her team Premier Racing yeah, she's is still the young. second best team so far, trailing only by 21 points so they definitely still have a chance to win it all. And speaking of winning, how about winning the heart of the Hollywood's biggest movie star back then, Steve McQueen. What? No. Yep, I'm not even kidding. Meet Neil Adams. Her real name is Ruby Neelam Salvador Arastia. She was born and raised in Manila in 1932. Wow. She's the child of a popular performer, Carmen Salvador, and Jose Pepe Arastia, who was known as the son of one of the most prominent hacienderos in Lubao, Pampanga. She barely knew her dad because she grew up under her mom's care. 
She would bring her to live performances, so it was natural for her to want to follow in her mom's footsteps. Before she became a teenager, her mom would start performing in the US, and unfortunately, this was also around the time when World War II broke out. When the Japanese attacked Manila in December 1941, her mom couldn't go back, so she was left under the care of her relatives. As the war continued, the Japanese started occupying the Philippines. Guerrilla groups started emerging. Mm. One of them was the Philippines' resistance against the Japanese. They were famously known as Huk Balahab, a group of peasant farmers that were originally formed to fight the Japanese but later rebelled against the government because they didn't like the terms of the alliance between the Philippines and the US. Then, the craziest thing happened. As a teenager, Neil became a spy for the resistance. She carried messages and intel between guerrilla groups. Yo. This went on for months until she got caught and incarcerated by the Japanese for 18 months. She was also reportedly wounded by shrapnel on one of her legs from a nearby explosion during that time. 1948, Neil's mom finally was able to return home and immediately moved her to the US where she would finish her studies in the art of performing at the Catherine Dunham School of Dance in New York. In 1953, she was cast as a dancer in the musical called Kismet and worked her way up to become the lead dancer of the show. Due to her ambiguous beauty and exceptional stage presence, hey. she was offered one of the lead roles in the show called The Pajama Game. Who's that? That's Neil Adams. What does she do? What does she do? Man! <laughs> Hey yo! She's killing it. While rehearsing for the show, she bumped into Steve McQueen. So? You should have that brandy after breakfast, not before. Why? I don't mean to overstep myself, but would you like to join me in a pot of coffee? The rest was history. Her name then became big in the Broadway scene and she also... Crazy, actually. And one of those fields is beauty pageants. You see, the competitive spirit will always be there for Filipinos. But pageants for us, it's not a competition. It's an obsession. That's crazy, bro. This reminds me of Brazil with soccer, bro. Futebol I think, with football. Uh, in this country, we were in dire need of heroes. Ah, oh oh, that's so awesome, man. It made people realize that somebody who comes from a far-flung area in the Philippines can probably stand a chance of making it with the rest of the world. We bagged so our beautiful. first Miss Universe titles back in 1969 with Gloria Diaz. The first runner-up is Miss Finland, Miss Philippines, is Miss Universe of 1969. Oh. And in 1973 with Margie Moran. The first runner up is Miss USA, Miss Philippines, is Miss Universe. But after that, we went on a 42 year drought. 42 <laughs> years! That's half a lifetime! And during those times, we really struggled. I won't change my legs because I'm contented with my long legs. What would you rather be, beautiful or smart? Well, um, quiet, please. <laughs> El Nino is what we are facing right now. If we do um, simple things like planting trees, then we can uh, we, we will not experience drought right so if we start now we will achieve la niña thank you all right so you won two of the major awards best in long gown best in swimsuit do you feel any pressure right now no i don't feel any pressure right now 
Confident. All right. Please choose a name of a judge. The question is, what role did your family play with you as candidate to be the bidding Filipinas? Well, my family's role for me is so important because there was the they are, they was the one who's very <laughs> oh I'm so sorry oh my family my family oh my god I'm okay yeah I'm so sorry I I told you that I'm so confident. Ito, um, wait. <laughs> um, sorry guys, because this was really my first pageant ever. Because I'm only 17 years old. And <laughs> what? She's 17? I, I did not expect that I came from, I came from one of the top 10. Hmm. So, but I said that my family is the most important persons in my life. Thank you. I'm not by any means an expert, but in my humble opinion, that long drought fueled our determination to win another title. We wanted to prove something so badly. So the community increasingly became desperate and the training for candidates became more and more grueling. Come 2010, it started paying off as the Philippines went on a 12-year semi-final streak. Maria Venus Rock, 22, Philippines. Chansi Sup Sup, 25, Philippines. Janine Togonon, 23, Philippines. Ariela Arida, Laguna. They kept winning in the semi, or they kept getting to the semifinals, right? This is Rabia Oxani Mateo, all the way from the Philippines. Beatrice Luigi Gomez, Philippines! Two of those runs made it all the way to the crown, but the road to getting there was very far from easy. During my research, I learned that Pia and Catriona also had their own fair share of crushing and devastating defeats. Here we go. The Bini Bini Filipinas 2013 runner up is none other than. Be the next Miss Universe. To be a Miss Universe is both an honor and a responsibility. If I were to be Miss Universe, I will use my voice to influence the youth and I would raise awareness to certain causes like HIV awareness that is timely and relevant to my country, which is the Philippines. I want to show the world, the universe rather, that I am confidently beautiful with a heart. Thank you. Miss Universe. 2015 is Colombia! I have to apologize. Huh? Nah. Miss Universe 2015 is 
Philippines. She's shaking, bro. While there was confusion in Pia's run, Catriona made sure there was no confusion as she made it so clear that she was the best candidate that night. Heck, most fans even agree that she's the best Miss Universe ever. Philippines! Philippines is a former martial artist who earned her black belt at 12 years old. Dang! Now 24, this fashion model and singer has raised funds for various charities through benefit concert held in her country and abroad. Philippines! Philippines! The music on. Oh. Philippines! Yeah, that dress is dope! Sparkly. an old apartment building in Manila. This 24-year-old turned the building into the Young Focus Child Care Plus Center. Mm. A school offering free education to children. Philippines! What is the most important lesson you've learned in your life and how would you apply it to your time as Miss Universe? I work a lot in the slums of Tondo, Manila and the life there is very, it's poor and it's very sad and I've always taught myself to look for the beauty in it, to look mm. in the beauty in the faces of the children and to be grateful. And I would bring this aspect as a Miss Universe to see situations with a silver lining and to assess where I could give something, where I could provide something as a spokesperson. And this, I think, if I Very could teach well also people to be grateful, yes. we could have an amazing world where negativity mm -hmm. could not grow and foster and children would have a smile on their face. Thank you. Amazing, man. Because of their victories, the Philippines became one of the biggest beauty pageant dynasties in the entire world with four titles behind USA's nine, Venezuela's seven, and Puerto Rico's five. An achievement that we Filipinos should be proud of. Now, in the beaches, the mountains, but I firmly believe that the best natural resource that the Philippines has is us Filipinos. We are the true heart and soul of the Philippines with the way we are hospitable, with the warm smiles. And we are the reason why the world keeps coming back for more. No matter where the universe takes me, I will always be proud to call the Philippines my home. And no matter what happens, I will always be proud to call myself Pinoy. Wow, bro. That was just incredibly beautiful it was it was perfect casual chuck fantastic video honestly and uh i feel like there are so many important things and i feel like the whole i feel like what i got from the video the most was um essentially that why tourists essentially want to come to the philippines right it all started with him even mentioning that in the beginning of the video it was that it, it, people think it's just all money is maybe lower or this but no it's because some of them want to they're they're sick and tired of western women they want to go and uh go to the philippines for you know to find wives and here's the thing right because people can easily water that part down i think what i get from that is essentially that the philippines you know when these people chase wives in the philippines it's not just as simple as that it's it's the fact that the philippines are so full of very humble and kind people as uh she said at the end there you know hospitable warm smiles which is why people keep coming back that is the real reason you know that is one of the real reasons why i want to visit because i know there are incredibly kind people there incredibly talented people that i will find there and so many things that i can just discover so many so it's like all the check marks right nice people incredibly nice people humble people talented people beautiful nature everything's just fantastic you know no matter what anybody thinks whether it's, they think it's just blowing smoke up somebody's cheese it's just like once again let's go back to what the other uh, miss universe said you know you know find the silver lining the the beautiful the beautiful parts within something that you think is just bad like you, you try and understand that fully you try to have perspective with these certain things and you will find yourself being a much happier person and also when you look at the philippines you can just see so many positives and there is negatives and i'm listen man you can go any anywhere in do anything and you will always find a negative in it you know what i mean like you can literally grab this cup of coffee and, and you can call it negative you know why because yo who made this cup do you know who made that it's like there's only so much 
that you can focus on before you just start becoming a negativity machine. You know what I'm saying? So you have to really look at that silver lining. Just like she said, you have to find the positive in it. This life, man, we don't live forever. Why spend it being negative? Why spend it doing something you don't want to do? You know what I mean? And I think the Philippines is an absolute, you know, beauty in showing that so incredible with showing so much hospitality so much so much kindness just in general a fantastic talented place with beautiful nature is there anything else to say no it's fantastic i love this video and i love the philippines i love you guys now look i just want to say thank you so 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 much for watching i really do appreciate it if you liked it leave a like if you loved it subscribe if you want more let me know down in the comments below and yeah Till next time, guys. Peace.